joining us um, for this press conference. We thought it was very important to be able to allow the media to uh, hear from the chief of police here in Durham, along with the mayor. Uh, we thank you both for being on the call, and we thank the members of the media for joining in and for your patience. This has definitely been uh, something that you know we're all trying to work to get the right information out um, and also show respect for the families involved. i uh, first like to introduce that we do have uh, Mayor Steve Shule on the call. Um, he's going to be able to say a few words and then introduce Police Chief C.J. Davis. Um, after that, I will open up the floor for the media to ask any questions that you may have. Um, and hopefully a lot of the stuff that they're going to say will answer some of those questions. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Amanda, appreciate it. Um, we have had last night a terrible night, a tragic night uh, in the city of Durham. We had two shootings uh, in which 10 people were shot Although there has not been uh, a loss of life recorded yet, uh, three children were shot. One of them is in serious uh, but stable condition. And another one, the 12 year old, is in critical condition. I first want to express my sorrow and on behalf of our community and our hearts go out to those families who, who had a loved one shot in this terrible, in these terrible incidents. But I also want to express my outrage on behalf of our community as well. At people who would shoot into a party or a gathering of any type, people who are bringing gun violence and terrorizing our community this is a relatively small number of people, but they're visiting violence on our community that is unacceptable. One of the things we know is that in order to help stop this, we need the cooperation and support of the members of our community, the witnesses to this gun violence who will come forward and support us, support their own families and support our community by working with our police to find out who did this and to make sure that they don't ever do it again. I wanna say that Chief Davis and her command staff and the Durham Police Department have my full support. I am behind them 100%. We are so fortunate that we have a fabulous police chief and Chief Davis who's done an amazing job with our police department in every way. She has my full confidence as, the, as the, does the department. And I know that she has the full confidence of the city council as well. One of the things that the chief has done is to focus our efforts on the, again, the relatively small number of violent offenders who are bringing this gun violence to our community. I think that's the right strategy. And Chief Davis, again, has my full support in this strategy. So I'm sorry to have to be here today on this terrible, for this terrible occasion. This is never the kind of thing that any of us wants to be here for. But it's important to address our community, to express our sorrow and our solidarity with the families, and also our outrage that this could happen here on the streets of Durham. We've got to change that. And now I'm going to introduce our chief, uh, Chief C.J. Davis, for her comments. Thank you, Mayor Shule, and thank you to everyone who is in attendance to hear the message that I have this morning. Sadly, this morning our community awoke after another night of senseless violence that has forever changed the lives of multiple victims and families. There is no excuse nor justification for such horrible acts against these members of our community, some of which were children. Last night at 221 South Benjamin Street, while people gathered at that residence for a party, a black vehicle believed to be a Chevrolet Impala drove by the home and fired several rounds at the crowd of attendees who gathered in the front of the residence. A total of eight individuals were shot 
during this incident and were transported by various means to local hospitals. Two of the victims were just children, ages three and eight. Later in the evening, at 3020 Weaver Street, based on our preliminary information, it is believed that an exchange of gunfire occurred between two groups of people who are unknown at this time. During the incident, a bullet entered a second floor apartment window, striking a 12-year-old victim. The victim is hospitalized and it is now in critical condition. It is unknown at this time if the Benjamin Street incident and the Weaver Street shooting are related. Just last week, a 74-year-old mother was struck and killed by celebratory gunfire. As a community, we grieve with the victims and their families. However, we as a community must also stand together to prevent these egregious acts of gun violence from happening to others. The safety and well being of our children and neighbors are all of our responsibility. We must say no more. Enough is enough. This must end. While shooting incidents are on the increase in cities around our nation, we refuse to allow the tensions of this present climate or the reckless actions of violent offenders to hinder our efforts towards ensuring safe and livable neighborhoods for all citizens. But we publicly implore to the individuals shooting at each other to find common ground and make a truce to cease this back and forth gunfire. Think of the innocent victims impacted by your actions. There are children in our community whose lives will never be the same because of the actions of those who don't care enough to put their differences aside and their guns down. The Durham Police Department will use every available resource to identify and bring to justice those that committed these horrible acts. Today, I also appeal to every community member who cares for the future of our children and others, please speak up. Too many innocent lives have been lost or shattered by gun violence. Help us take our neighborhoods back. If you see something, please say something before another life is tragically impacted. At this time, we will open up for questions. Thank you so much, Chief Davis, um, for that statement. Um, if you would like to ask a question, if you could raise your hand and then I'll call on you so that you can be unmuted. All right, we have Charles Bradley. Hi there, this is Aaron Thomas uh, with the WRAL News. Um, I had one question. Of course, we're getting a lot of hearsay from different neighbors. Uh, in regards to the 12 year old uh, at the East Weaver Street location. Uh, did the 12-year-old live at that apartment or were they here for some type of cookout or whatever? And then my second question is, um, this exchange of gunfire, is it believed that this is any type of gang activity or is it too early to answer that question? As far as the residents um, and the 12-year-old living at that location, I believe that 12-year-old was uh, well, and we're still trying to confirm the 12 year old was located at that that particular location, but we're trying to confirm whether or not they were actually a resident at that particular location. As it relates to gang violence, um, you know, uh, I, I will say this, that even though we haven't confirmed any particular um, individuals associated with gangs, it is our belief that this um, this type of activity, the characteristics of it is associated with gangs. Okay, thank you so much, Aaron. Um, does anyone else have a question? Okay, we have a Bridget. If you could state your name and your station and your question, we'll unmute you shortly. Ms. Bridget Chaplin. Hi, Bridget Chapman here with CBS 17 News. Chief, I know you spoke about the importance of people speaking up in terms of the Weaver Street shooting. Have any witnesses come forward? And if so, has their information led you anywhere? I know that you said there is no suspect information at this point. 
There is no suspect information at this particular point. However, uh, the department is following some leads. Uh, we continue to encourage our community members. Somebody was out there last night. Somebody saw something. Somebody may have even been a bystander. And this is what this appeal is about. Please say something because we don't want those individuals who would carry out such reckless acts to continue this type of activity in, in our communities. So um, at this particular time, we are continuing to canvas that community and we believe that there will be individuals that will provide information for us. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next we have Mark Sebnicki with a question. Kruger. Oh, hi Chief, this is Sarah Kruger with WRAL. Um, I just wanted to ask more information specifically about the South Benjamin Street shooting if you have, I know you mentioned a black Chevy Impala may be involved. Do you have any more information you can share about the suspect um, and what a motive might have been in this? Not sure the motive, Sarah, but uh, we don't believe that this was just a random act. Um, all we have is the description of that particular vehicle. And as you know, as these, uh, these um, incidents unfold, more information comes in. So we will continue to follow those leads and um, even uh, to the point of continuing canvassing in those communities to see whether or not some leads will help us identify suspects. Okay, thank you. Next we have Jason DeBruin. Hi, thank you. Um, this is Jason DeBruin. I'm with North Carolina Public Radio and the Guns and America Reporting Project. A bit more of a global question um, for you, if you don't mind, uh, I think it's pretty clear that the pandemic has exacerbated um, some violence. I wonder if you might address how the pandemic has affected uh, violent crime and shootings in general, um, perhaps for this case specifically, um, if you're not comfortable addressing that, you know, tying that together to this case specifically, that's okay. But, but maybe if you could address how violent crime and shootings have been um, perhaps exacerbated because of the pandemic. Uh, yes, I, I will. And, and not to um, say that this specific case, you're absolutely right, don't want to associate it with this specific case. But um, we do believe that the environment, the pandemic itself has um, created an environment where um, these types of shootings have been, you know, quite prevalent. Uh, just by nature of the interaction between the community and, and officials and, of course, the, the entire criminal justice system has been impacted. So it is very, a very complicated environment and we have had to adjust um, the manner in which we uh, address these types of situations and not so much in a traditional way but uh, at a, di at a, at a uh, distance, you know, to, um, to, to have some very robust investigations so that we can help identify some of the individuals who are committing um, crimes that, that are related to illegal guns. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, any other questions for Chief or for the Mayor? All right, well, thank you, Chief Davis, and thank you, Mayor Shul, for, uh, for your, your statements and allowing um, for the media to ask these questions. Um, if any members of the media, if you think of any additional questions, you can email us at dpdmedia at durhamnc.gov. Again, we're really looking for people to come forward and give us any information about any of these uh, shootings that occurred. And we're hoping that you guys can get the word out so that we can get the word out to get- Hey, Amanda, I hate details. to interrupt you, but Tom Donahue has a question. He's trying to get in. All right, no problem. We'll, we'll let him in. Hi, this is Tim Pulliam speaking. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, Tim, go ahead. Hi there, sorry about that. The video was not uh, playing. Uh, Chief Davis, I have a, a two-part question. Um, from what I understand, we've been here before uh, last year with, with Zion Person uh, being shot and killed last summer. And I do recall you introducing ShotSpotter as something that could help in these types of investigations. You presented that to the city and the mayor just said in his opening remarks that, he, that you have his full support. 
So I want to know where are things with ShotSpotter do you think it could have helped in this situation? And will you try to present that again to the city? Well, Tim, you know, um, yes, it's been about a year now uh, since not just um, the discussion about ShotSpotter, but since we had a press conference very similar to this related to Zion Person. And this is getting old, um, not just as a police chief, but as a a community member, a mother, uh, to see the reckless disregard for life in our community. Uh, the Durham Police Department and I intend to seek out every opportunity to um, quell this type of activity, whether it's through technology, whether it's through other innovations. And um, the only thing we can do is continue to try to work together. Um, this is very surreal. This is, um, it's, it's, it's a situation that I think we're all very frustrated about and we are all seeking for answers. So I will continue to work towards uh, employing any type of systems and technology that will ensure or at least help to ensure the safety of our community members. All right, thank you. Um, I'm opening up the group chat to see that there, I guess people were able to raise their hand, um, but I do see there's a question from Crystal Price as well. Uh, yes, hi, this is uh, Crystal Price with CBS 17. I was wondering if we could get an update on the conditions of the other victims at Benjamin Street. Is everyone expected to be okay? Um, right now, there are two individuals that are still in serious condition or critical condition. And then the others, I think, are in stable condition. Okay, thank you. And lastly, Virginia Bridges. Hi, Virginia from the News and Observer. Um, last year, Chief, you had requested six new officers for the, the gang unit, which, which you were granted. Where is where is that process in the hiring or bringing on those new members and have they assisted in this investigation? Um, yes, we were, um, we had deployed those individuals into the gang unit at that particular time, Virginia. Of course, that wasn't the totality of the ask. However, those individuals have been very busy throughout our city. If you keep up with the number of shootings that occur in the city that we think are gang related, those six individuals are working around the clock trying to uh, put all the puzzle pieces together. And, um, and of course, they're being supported by other uh, officers on patrol and other investigative units. Uh, we will continue to look internally to try to move individuals around as this problem continues to uh, fester and manifest itself in a way that is difficult to control. But we will continue to uh, put all of the resources that we have to bear towards this particular uh, issue. And yes, those investigators have done um, extremely good work. They started, hit the ground running uh, with some of the gang issues, but we still have a, a, a problem in our city that uh, we're trying to get our arms around. All right, thank you. And last question, Alyssa. Hi, Alyssa from the News and Observer. What kind of intervention are police planning to do to reduce the number of shootings? Say that again. What kind of intervention are police planning to do to reduce the number of shootings in the city? At this particular time, you know, uh, and I mentioned the, the current um, state of events as far as, you know, the pandemic that we're dealing with and, and the many other issues uh, at hand. We are moving resources around and, um, you know, trying to get our community to, to assist and provide information especially about illegal gun activity, illegal gun sales, and even stolen weapons uh, to, to get some of these guns off the street. We continue to seize weapons, you know, from the streets, but, you know, we only have the capacity to do but so much, but that doesn't mean we aren't going to continue to try to uh, stop some of the gun violence, but we are asking for the assistance from our community members, especially those who have to experience um, gunfire and the diminishing quality of life from this type of activity. 
All right, thank you, uh, Chief. We also want to uh, thank uh, our city manager, Tom Bonfield, for being on the call. We also see that city councilwoman Freeman is also on the call. We want to thank you both for joining um, and also Mayor Steve Shule for uh, his statements. And uh, Mayor Shule, if you don't have any additional remarks, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay. And Chief, anything else you'd like to say? No, thank you to everybody who is attending. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Again, if you have any additional questions we didn't answer here, uh, you can email us at dpdmedia at durhamnc.gov. We also like to note that all of this is uh, was being broadcast live on our social media pages as well as on the city uh, so that everyone could be able to be informed about this. And again, please help us to spread the word so we can try to bring closure to these families and find out who is responsible. Thank you all so much.